And good evening, everyone. Welcome to another exciting Saturday Night Wine stream and another exciting episode of Drink with Rick. I'm Rick, and tonight, well, we're going to open uh, a wine that was a recommendation from a good friend of mine, a good old friend of mine. I'll talk more about him later as well, uh, because he kind of ties into a t another toast we're going to be doing tonight for another special friend that we both knew. And... Um, you know, interesting, I could not find the actual wine that he recommended, but I found one of the same label that was a little bit different, but uh, still should be pretty good. There is a second wine. We do have a second wine, and it's a dessert wine, and it was a, one of the wines that he did recommend, and we're going to try that out. We're going to taste that out as well. So this should be a great time had by all. Also, we're going to, well, we're going to toast birthdays, the national days. I have a couple of special toasts for a couple of special friends of mine. Uh, and then uh, one of them on Twitch and another one who is uh, no longer with us, but but uh, he is an old film friend. And we're going to show, I'm going to show you an animated film we did that was sort of a send-up of him and his isms. So that we made back in the 1980s, a uh, cutout animation. So I think you'll really enjoy that. Also, I'm going to tell you how you can win a free bottle of wine for June 2021. And uh, it's an open chat tonight. So feel free to get in the chat and tell me what's going on, how you're doing. Uh, if you're joining me here for the first time or for the 117th time, because this is Drink With Rick episode 117, uh, this is a stream of consciousness kind of show. I do have some show notes. And they're right here with me. I don't always follow them verbatim because this show is not about me. It's somewhat about the wine, but this show is really about you and me getting together on a Saturday night, kicking back, relaxing at the end of the day and having a great time on a, on a weekend, Saturday night. Just, just, just chatting, hang, hanging around. Okay, that that sounds like fun, doesn't it? And wine brings people together. But you don't have to be drinking wine. You can drink your favorite libation, whatever it is. Okay, uh, so feel free to jump in, snack if you want to, because I have some foods to pair this wine with as well. So I'll show you all that in just a few moments. Now, first. I want to tell you that you can watch live tonight, right now. You can watch live on the Facebook page. It's at Drink With Rick. You can also watch live on YouTube. YouTube is Drink With Rick. Also on our Twitch channel. Twitch channel is at, oh, excuse me, it's Drink With Rick 1. Drink With Rick and the number one. Also on Twitter. Twitter is at Drink With Rick. Also on the website. You can watch on the website live at drinkwithrick.com. I don't have a chat going there, but if you open up the post for this episode of the wine stream going live, there'll be a comment box down and you can respond in kind. You can uh, leave your comments to me in kind. Also, the podcast. Podcast goes out on Monday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern. Monday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, because this is we are in our daylight time here in the eastern portion of the United States. And uh, if you go to drinkwithrick.com, you can subscribe from any one of the, uh, the subscribe buttons there in the subscribe page. You can subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn, Android, Stitcher Radio, Blueberry.com, iHeartRadio, Deezer, Amazon Music, PodcastIndex.org. And you can also subscribe by email. If you click on the button that says by email, put in your email address and you'll get the latest episode of Drink With Rick as soon as it drops. And no salesman will call, okay? And you can subscribe. You can unsubscribe at any time. Subscribe at any time, unsubscribe at any time. It's all good. It's all good. It's, it's okay. I'd be disappointed if you unsubscribe, but you know what? It's your choice. You're free to do what you want to do. If you don't enjoy it, let me know first. If, if, you don't, if you're not liking the, the show, let me know first. Let me know what I can do to, to fix things, to make it better, to improve it, because I do take your feedback. I try to keep constructive. Don't be mean, but <laughs> you know, uh, just uh, let me know, and um, I'll do the best I can to try to deliver a better show next time, and hopefully, I can deliver a great show tonight because I do have some some fun planned for us all. But really, you guys make a lot of this fun, so please join in and tell me what you're drinking, tell me what you're not drinking, tell me what you like to be drinking, or tell me what you like to see me drinking. And if I can afford a bottle of it, I'll see if I can. Buy it and drink it too and try it out. Also, if you're a vintner, 
Send me a bottle of wine, and I will give it a fair and honest review. I will. Okay, so let's see, uh, before we get to the wine tonight, let's see who we have in the chat. In the chat, we have Twitch. Ah, Rye Bread Arts in the Twitch. And I'm glad to see you, Rye Bread Arts. Great to see you. He says, excited for wine time, and so am I. Believe me, so am I. It's been quite a day. Uh, Rye Bread Arts says, I'm drinking chai tea tonight. I love chai tea. I really do like chai tea, and I, I've had quite a bit of it. I used to drink in the afternoons at, at work, and um, I, can't, I still have it occasionally, but I like a really good chai tea. Uh, CM Cinder's in the chat. CM Cinder says, do boo. <laughs> okay. How you doing, CM Cinder? It's, gla- it's, it's, great. it's great to see you. I haven't had any wine yet, folks. I have not, but we're going to have some in just a few moments. Let me see if anything's going on on YouTube, quiet on YouTube, and let's check Facebook. Facebook, my lovely wife, Chi, is in Facebook. She says, hi, right back at you. Uh, hi, Chi, and I'm glad you're here as well. Folks, I know we're starting a little late tonight. <clears throat> Normally, we start at 10 p.m. Eastern, but we, uh, we're we starting tonight at 11, and this is due to a, a, a family emergency uh, that, that came up today, and uh, we, so we got a little bit of a late start there. Everything's okay. It's, it's all okay. It's all good, but uh, we just got a little bit of a late start, so I apologize for that, but the show is is still on. We're still on tonight. I actually was going to cancel the show uh, for tonight, but my my wife, Chi, and, and and Tommy, my son, Tommy Antio, he says, no, 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 go ahead and do the show. Go ahead and do the show. So we're doing the show. So I had to scramble around a little bit tonight, but we're doing the show. All right, but I'm glad you're all here. Now, this is what we're drinking tonight. <clears throat> well, actually, before I show this to you, I have something I want to read to you from one of our viewers, a, a good friend of mine, that uh, let me let me pull it up here for just a moment. This is directly to re- related to the uh, to the wine. Uh, this is from my good friend Ian, who watches the show regularly. He says, "Hi Rick, really enjoy your wine tasting reviews. Thought you might like trying these sometime, unless you are already familiar with them." I drank them regularly when I was stationed in Italy while in the Navy, and I'm glad I can get them here. Montresor Rostigo is a Merlot-based Italian blend from Veneto, and the Castello del Poggio Moscato comes from a winery that's been bottling since 1706. This Moscato is a semi-sweet, low-alcohol, fizzy white wine, so it goes well with desserts. And that is from my friend Ian. So I told Ian, I said, you know what, I'm going to see if I can I can find these. So I scoured the town around the town during the week uh, in my free time, what little free time I have during the week, um, in between my work hours, and uh, hunted around. I, you know what? I could not find the uh, the Rustigo, the 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 red one, the Rustigo Merlot, and um, I couldn't find it anywhere. And he actually sent me pictures of each of the bottles, so I knew what they what they, the labels looked like. But I couldn't find them, and supposedly it was available at Total Wine. Apparently, not the Total Wine in our area. Now they did have the Matresso Rostigo, but they didn't have the, the 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 Merlot that he was talking about. Uh, this was actually, I think, it was about Policello, wasn't it? Uh, anyway, so uh, but I did find a Montresso Rostigo, the same label, but it was a Rosso. Veneto. So I thought, well, I might try this. However, I did, and, and I did not find the Castello del Poggio there either, but my wife, Chi, went to the local supermarket here at Harris Te- Teeter, and she said, oh, they have it right here. So we bought a bottle of it. So I do have both bottles, both wines. I don't have a photo of the, the white, but I do have the red. This is the red. This is what we're drinking tonight, uh, along with the, the Castello del Poggio. This is the Matresso Rostigo Rosso. It's a Veneto. This is a 2019 vintage. And we're going to open up and we're going to taste it and we're going to pair it with some foods. This is the back of the wine, by the way. And I'm going to read the back, uh, what little there is to read there. Matresso Rostigo Rosso Veneto 2019. Uh, it says intense red color, scent of berries, dry aromatic taste. Great with grilled white and red meats and mild cheese. And it says serve at 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, I did not, I did not think to do that tonight. <laughs> Didn't read the label very well. <clears throat> did not, excuse me. <clears throat> did not read, no, I'm losing my voice here. 
There's an edit. <clears throat> it's been a long day, folks. Did not read the label very well here. I should have, but it does say t alcohol is 12.5% by volume, and it is a 750 milliliter bottle, a product of Italy, and it is a red wine. So we are going to go ahead and try that out tonight. Now let me show you the wine that I do not have a picture of because uh, we got it kind of late. This is the white. This is a, a, a Castello del Poggio. I did not have a, I looked around here. I did not see a, a, a vintage date here. I did not see one here. Just say established 1699. And uh, so uh, he did mention it was 1706, but uh, I think I saw that somewhere else here. Uh, but it says 1699 established, uh, 1699. But this is the Moscato. We're going to open that up. And the Moscato is a dessert wine. I'm not a real big fan of sweet wines, but we're going to we're going to open it up because I have this is what I have to pair it with. What I have to pair it with is this. <clears throat> what I have to pair it with is this. We have uh, so a couple of meats here. I think we have here is a burger. Oh, what is this? I'm not sure what that is. Gee, what is that? And you can help me out a little bit. It's um, it's something. <laughs> uh, it's okay. Uh, what we have here, we definitely have some beef, some sausages. That's what this is. And some crackers, of course, clear the palate. And then I have some cheeses here. The cheeses I have tonight, uh, the Clarina Gouda cheese. That's what this is, I believe. And then we have some cheddar, and we have the Toscano with the Syrah. And I'm looking forward to the Toscano with Syrah. That should be pretty good with this wine. Also, for the dessert wine, because we have dessert wine, it's supposed to go great with desserts, we have a cookie, and we have this wonderful cupcake that my wife, Chi, made. And th this is actually a... Um, this is actually one of these healthy cupcakes that she made. It, it's, it's, um, what is that thing called? It's, uh, <laughs> help me out here. Gee, I'm blanking out. It's late and I haven't had any wine yet. Okay. Anyway, so it's a nice cupcake that my wife, she made. <laughs> All right. So, um, anyway, so let's, let's get back to the, now let me get to the chat here before we open up the wine. Let's see what we've got. She will set me straight on all of this. I know she will. Uh, that's what she does. That's what my wife does. So, uh, Rye Bread Art says, uh, oh, uh, Seam Sanders says, how's the night day? And uh, Rye Bread Art says, I'm doing good drawing while watching the stream. And uh, Seam Sanders says, uh, cool, I draw, but I don't have the energy left for it. And, and you know, we, we've had, we've all had a long day. Of, the whole family has. Um, but... You know, what an ending to the day. I to open a nice bottle of wine, just sitting back and relaxing, just kind of decompressing a little bit, you know? And that's what uh, that's what we're all going to do tonight. Just have a little bit of fun. Okay, so here is the wine. And I'm going to give us a close-up here. And then I've got my, uh, where is it? Right here, the foil cutter. My foil cutter here. And if I can get around the bottle... All right, came up nice and easy. And then, of course, I have my mechanical corkscrew. I had a little bit of a false start with this the other night, but uh, hopefully it should work fine tonight. But apparently, these, these things uh, go out after a period of time. You have to replace them. Um, hopefully, that's not the case tonight. Oh, and it comes out nice and easy. Okay. It also depends on the kind of cork, too. That some corks, it works better with some corks than others, and some corks... Doesn't uh, it doesn't work well with it all? I found, uh, but that's, you know, that's how it, how it goes. All right, we're going to pour this wine with the, this is my with my. Veneto. Aerator from the Veneto Wine Lover set available from A M A Z O N, and I don't think they're going to give me anything, uh, for for, promoting that, as an affiliate. I think I'm about to be use my, uh, lose my affiliate with them because uh, I haven't really been doing much with it. Anyway, so uh, let's see. We've got, of course, the glass to hold the wine in, to hold this nectar. I have my trusty Galway Genuine Irish Crystal Glass from Ireland, given to me by my employers at buy 2 radioscom 
and uh, let's go ahead and give this a little pour. This is a nice, nice, uh, uh, slim bottle here. I like this. I like the bottle. It's kind of tall, but I like the bottle. It's nice, and this wine pours fairly well into here. I'm just going to pour a little bit for starters. We're going to let it breathe, just breathe a little bit. And while it's doing that, while it's opening up a little, let's find out a little bit more about this wine. So here's what I found. I didn't find a whole lot on it, actually. Let me get my, here we go. Um, I didn't find a whole lot about it, but what I did find was, was interesting. This wine seems to go pretty well with, um, with, with a lot of different foods, with uh, beef and lamb, chicken, pasta, some deer, some game. Uh, so it, it, it goes with a, pretty well with a, a wide variety of foods. And I think with the chicken, it kind of depends on how that's prepared. But uh, it's, it's uh, you know, not so much a baked chicken, maybe a grilled, like a, a, a smoked or grilled chicken. It may be okay with. But this gets 3.7 stars on, on Vivino. I didn't find it a whole lot of uh, places here online. And they're saying that it gets uh, the prices start um, around $30, $31, but that's not what I paid for. Now, uh, Ian told me that th there were that both of these wines averaged around uh, $12 to $15 a bottle, which was fine. That, that's one reason why I went out and got them, because that was right within my budget, and so that, uh, that, that sounded okay to me. I did find a, uh, a total wine, this, this particular wine that I picked up, I picked it up for, uh, where is it? Oh, here it is, um, Montresor Rustigo, $10.99. I got this bottle of wine for $10.99. So we'll see how it pairs up, how it pairs up the food and how it, well, how it, uh, how it rates, <laughs> I should say. All right, so let's give it a little bit of a whiff. <clears throat> Mm, right off the bat, I'm smelling, there's some rich fruits in here. They're red fruits, but I am smelling some uh, some raspberry right right there on the nose. Raspberry and cherry right there on the nose. And you know what? Get a little mix of strawberry in there too. So we'll we'll give it a taste and see how it uh, how it tastes. Ooh. A little stronger on the cherry than the raspberry, but all three of those berries are there. I'm tasting the cherry, the raspberry, the strawberry. It has some earthy notes to it, but it's not it's not um, super earthy. It is somewhat. It doesn't look bold. It actually looks fairly. If you see through through here, it it's sort of medium bodied, um, but it is it's a, a little on the bold side. Not too bad. I'd say it's medium. I'd say to me, I've heard uh, some things I've seen online so it's a little on the bold side. I'm not really getting that. Maybe as it opens up a little more, maybe it'll be a little bolder. But right now, I'm not getting that. It's it's uh, sort of medium. There's some tannin in here, but there are some fairly smooth tannin in this wine. I, I, I that's what I'm getting. Mm. Kind of smooth, sweet on the tongue a little bit, just a hair. In the back of the throat, uh, not a hair. There's not a hair in the back of my throat. Okay, it's just a hair sweet on the back of my throat is what I meant. Um, but it's, yeah, I know I'm talking to myself in the corner here. But um, it's a very dry. It's a very dry wine. It's not super dry, but it is very dry. But it is smooth. It is a smooth wine. Some earthy notes to it, but it's not really super earthy. I, I wouldn't say it's uh, too earthy of a wine. Uh, and um, I think this is, a, I'm really getting a little bit more raspberry in here now, but I like it. I like the mix. It's a nice mix. And it is, um, the finish, it's not a super, well, actually, it is kind of a long finish. I'm still getting some of the the um, flavors and, uh, uh, yeah, in the back of my throat, and I've already swallowed this wine, and I'm still getting... A little bit of flavor. Actually, I'm getting a little bit of strawberry now. Come, uh, you know, that's that's uh, in the finish. So, actually, a very very fruity wine, and uh, I wouldn't call it fruit forward, 
but there's a lot of fruit in it. But it's it's a very um, it's a pleasant mix. It's a pleasant mix of fruit. I can see why Ian likes the wines like this, the Montresor wines. This wine tastes like it's well aged. Um, this is a 2019, but it actually tastes like it's uh, it's it's well aged and, and uh, it's matured a little bit, so that it's really really uh, nice wine. It's really nice uh, wine to drink. Um, I, I like it. I like it. So far, I like it. But we're going to uh, pair it with the foods, and then we'll try the Castello del Poggio um, for, with the desserts later on towards the end of the show. I, I kind of want to be prepared for the sweet stuff there, really. So uh, before we do that, let's go ahead and back to the chats for just a moment, see what's going on in the chats. And uh, Chi says, gluten-free vanilla cupcake and shortbread cookie. Okay, that's what we had here. Uh, this is what she's talking about. This is a yeah. She made these cupcakes gluten free. I, I, I don't know why that slipped my mind here. Gluten free because we've been gluten free a lot lately. Gluten free vanilla cupcake, and she has a vanilla icing that she made herself. This is her home homemade icing. It's quite good, and she has a little candy decoration on top, which were also quite good. In fact, I kind of went looking in the the cupboard for. For a whole package of those decorations, because I thought I might snack on a few. Uh, <laughs> you're not supposed to know that, Chi, but I couldn't find them. You hid them. Well, you hid them well. You hid them well. And then we have a shortbread cookie. You know, I I think the shortbread cookie will probably go very well with the Moscato. I'm just guessing, but I th I think it will. Yeah. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and try it with the foods. And uh, then let's see what we have here. First thing, if, first thing off the bat, what is this meat that I'm eating here, uh, Chi? Uh, it's it's, I don't know what what is this? That's it's uh, it, it tastes and smells like a, a sausage. It's a sausage. It's like is this a chicken sausage? I think this is, it smells like a smells like a chicken sausage, huh? It tastes like a chicken sausage. I think it's a chicken sausage. No spicy. I don't know about this one. Let's see. Hmm. I wasn't really cringing. I'm just trying to think about that one. Um. I don't know. It's 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 okay. It's okay. It would not be my first pairing. I, I would. Say with a, a sausage like that, I would prefer maybe, uh, maybe something a little bit uh, lighter, maybe maybe a white with that with that one, but uh, Pinot Grigio maybe might might be better. And let me clear the palate just a little bit and clear the throat a little bit more, <clears throat> and we'll try it with the this is the beef summer sausage, right? Beef sausage. I think this would work very well with this one. I'm, I'm just guessing. Kind of spicy, but very good. And we'll go in the pour just a little bit more wine to go with that. Mm-hmm. It's good sausage. It's good beef sausage. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Pretty decent. Decent. Um... I would say this is really more of a pasta wine, a pasta and a, a, a wine with a, maybe a, a lasagna or something, but a sausage lasagna like that, I think it would be fine. I think it would be fine like that, or, or a, um, a sausage lasagna, maybe ziti with sausage in it or something like that, or a pizza. I think it would go pretty well with that, with any of those, I think it would. Uh, let's see, we'll clear the palate one more time. And then we're going to try it with the, uh, this is a, the Clarina Gouda cheese. That's what we got here, right? Clarina, this is a, what's on here? Is it pronounced Clarina? 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 It's from Trader Joe's, right? Is that from Trader Joe's? Uh, let's see. Looks like it's got some, is this a fresh cheese? It looks like it's got some kind of mold or something on it. What is it? Well, that one dropped. I dropped that one, so I can't can't use that one. Let's see. Let's try a little piece of this. I'm not sure about this one. <laughs> Let's try a little piece of this, huh? Yeah. This one. 
This one's in the fridge too long or something. I don't know. Is this fresh? Ah. Yeah, I can't say I like that cheese too much. Uh, let me clear the palate one more time. <laughs> mm. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah, I didn't care for that tease too much. I didn't even want to try it with the wine. Oh, boy. Uh, let me get a cracker here. I've got to try it. I've got to get a cracker. Clear this palate a little bit more. Mm. Oh. Sorry, folks. Didn't mean to gross anybody out there. There's a clip for you. Anybody wants to, any on Twitch who wants to make a clip, there's a clip for you right there. An outtake. Let's see. Mm. That helped. <laughs> the crackers with the wine. That helped. Crackers go pretty good with the wine, by the way, actually. All right, another outtake. The second outtake there. All right, so this is what we're going to try it with now. Let me tr try... Uh, Boy, that cheese was, uh, yeah, I didn't care much for that. That was not good. That was, it looked like there was some mold or something on that cheese, but it's, uh, well, I'm not sure. <laughs> Moldy oh, cheese. Okay, so this is what we're trying now. This is the cheddar. You can't screw up cheddar, right? Mmm, this is good cheddar. All right, let's try it with cheddar. Mm. Okay, that's good. That's good pairing. I like that. I think this goes well with a cheddar cheese. This this um, this wine goes pretty well with the cheddar. Let me clear the palate one more time. And uh, now we're going to try it with the uh, Toscana Toscano with Syrah. This is uh, let me show you this one. This the Toscano with the Syrah. It has that. The, the outer skin there is uh, is the Syrah. So, and uh, this has been a pretty good cheese so far. We're going to, <clears throat> we're going to try it with that. And it is a good cheese, by the way. The polar opposite of whatever that was we tried at first. Mm. Okay, this is good cheese. Oh, and a nice pairing, too. I think it helps that a little bit of that Syrah was in there. It's uh, <clears throat> very good. Very, very nice. I like it. Ooh. Good pairing. Good pairing. Very good. All right, so we, I'd say overall, this wine goes pretty well. As I, as I surmise, I think this wine goes pretty well with the uh, sausage-type um, meats, the beef, the lamb. I would say if it's going to be a chicken, be like a grilled chicken, not really a, not really a uh, chicken sausage per se. That, that, I don't think that was the best pairing, but uh, something like a barbecue chicken that that would be probably be okay with this. And the pastas, pasta is really good. I think that would go fine with all of the pastas out there. So I think that's. Uh, I'll give you my final review at the end as this wine has opened up a little bit more. But in the meantime, let's pour a little bit more of this wine, get back to the chats, and see what's going on there. And uh, my, let's see, my wife's in the chat there. And who else we have going on? Uh, let's see, nothing going on on YouTube and on Twitch. <clears throat> so uh, Nubatism's in the chat. Nubatism says hi and hi right back at you. It's great to see you. Tell me how you're doing. Tell me how your week's been going. I'll tell you, what, my week uh, was, was pretty busy. And uh, today was a little on the on the rough side this afternoon, but uh, and my uh, yeah Tom Antio's in the chat. Tom Antio says, "How is the wine?" And it's uh, it's shaping up to be pretty decent right now. I, I think it's a pretty good wine. I like the wine. And that square guy's in the chat. My good friend, that square guy's in the chat. He says, "Hi Rick," and hi right back at you. The square guy says, "Just finished lunch with my family." And how was lunch with your family? How did your family? I hope your family's doing well. Hope everyone's doing well. I hope Darcy's well, too, and I'm uh, pretty sure I, 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 I was just watching the two of you yesterday doing a baking video. I'll tell everybody more about that in just a little bit, because I've got, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that square guy in just a little bit. So stick around. I hope Darcy's with you, by the way, watching with you, and uh, and uh, glad uh, glad to, to see you here, absolutely. And, uh, and your family's doing okay? 
And the score guy says, Mom made an incredible feast. Family is good. Darcy and I are tired after yesterday. Oh, yeah, I'm sure I'm sure you two are. Like I said, I'm going to uh, talk a little bit more about the score guy in just a little bit um, coming up, as, as a matter of fact. The thing is that... Uh, you uh, you guys had a long day yesterday with uh, with your stream, didn't you? I do some pie baking, and, and I was up for a lot of that, and I, it was all it was very entertaining. I really enjoyed it, and so I believe I, I I'm pretty sure you guys are pretty tired, <laughs> pretty tired today, but I'm glad you're here. Okay, let's see what else we got going on. Uh, any I don't know how to even really look at, at anybody posting on Twitter to be honest, as uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That square guy says, looking forward to eating blueberry pie shortly. Oh, yes. Please have some. Have some during the stream. I wish I could have some of that with you because I tell you what, that pie looked really, really good. Uh, that pie looked really good. And uh, my wife, Chi, uh, you know, Chi, you should watch some some of their baking streams. They're, they're really entertaining. They're, they're entertaining. They're a lot of fun. But I've, I learned a few things. I learned a few things of that baking uh stream last night. For one thing, I learned uh, not to <laughs> not to heat up some things in the microwave first. Not to warm, not to melt butter in the microwave before putting it into a uh, into a bowl of of uh, of, uh, cr uh, of the dough for for pie crust. That that's what I learned. Uh, Tommy Antio says, "I wish I could have made the baking stream." Square guy, hope the pie was good. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so, all right, so uh, let's go ahead and go to the birthday, because that's what I've got next on the list here, if, it's, uh, if everybody's good for that. I'm going to go ahead and go with the birthdays and the national days. Let's, uh, let's get that started. I'm going to cue the fireworks here, cue the fireworks, and um, pour the wine, pour some more wine so we can do some. I don't have a lot of birthdays to toast this week, to be honest, but the ones I have are real doozies okay so i hope everyone has a glass of something and will toast along with me and the first birthday i want to toast is one some, uh, for a friend of mine who i toasted in last week but his birthday really officially wasn't until yesterday till uh, friday and uh, that's my good friend mark and and i had i didn't talk about mark uh, and junie wright uh last week and and uh, talking about how they were real old friends of, of cheese and and mine and how we used to pal around together when we were all dating and we go out uh, on dates, uh, you know, uh, foursomes, you know, go to, to uh, shopping and just hobnobbing around town and just kind of hanging out and just just uh, just doing things together. And uh, it was a lot of fun. Mark's a really, really cool guy, really nice guy, smart guy. And uh, he and, and, and Junie um, have, a, have a really fine family. And the really uh, Junie and, and she are really close friends. Mark. Here's to you, my good friend. Happy, happy birthday. And may you have many, many, many more. And this is my good friend Mark Wright. Okay, um, I'm going to save I'm, I'm going to save uh, one of these birthdays to uh, to a little bit later. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and well, actually I should do it now. I'm toasting now because we're gonna have another send up for him later. This is my friend Will. My good friend Will. Uh, Will uh, and I went back way, way back to the f days of the film club in Orlando. That's how I met him. We all uh, met Will back then during the film club days. And um, really cool guy, a little bit bombastic, but, but really cool. And I'm going to tell you all about him. I'm not going to go into a big uh, thing about Will right now. I do want to toast him because his birthday is right here on the same day. His birthday was yesterday, same as Mark's. Now, Will isn't with us anymore. Will passed away. Uh, almost three years ago now, he passed away in 2018. Uh, but he would have been 90 years old yesterday. And uh, I wanted to give him a posthumous, um, well, in memoriam, toast, birthday toast. And here's to my good friend, Will Campbell. And I'm going to do a little bit more uh, with toasting Will uh, coming up a little bit later. And I'll, I'll explain why, because we have something... I want to show you that has a lot to do with Will. <laughs> but um, I do want to give another birthday toast out. The, the, the next birthday toast I want to give out uh, is to, for my good friend. And he's in the chat right now. 
hopefully he's still in the chat. <laughs> Santa run away yet? Uh, no, he's still in the chat, right? <laughs> and uh, oh, so that square guy says, uh, oh, okay, I've got an IPA beer. Well, excellent. Uh, and Squirka has an IPA. Now, I don't have an IPA here with me. I've had a few. Um, I actually, I might have one downstairs somewhere. But um, that's that's great. So get ready to toast with me. He's going to toast with me. He's, <laughs> aren't you? Um, that's Square Guy. Your birthday is tomorrow. Actually, I don't know. Is it today now in Australia? That Square Guy's in Australia. He and Darcy live in Australia. Halfway around the world. Land down under. And um, that square guy, he is uh, he is a Twitch streamer. He uh, does a, a lot of streaming on Twitch, but he does a number of things. He's multi-talented. I would say he is multi-talented. And so is Darcy, actually. Uh, his better half, right? Can I say that? I, I guess I probably should say that, right? Because I mean, we, we always re refer to our um, significant others and spouses as uh, the better half. Uh, if we if we know what's good for us, right? <laughs> Isn't that true? So um, that square guy, he he lives in the land down under. So I'm not sure exactly what the time zone is. It might already be tomorrow. Is it already tomorrow? Pretty close to tomorrow. Uh, I think it is. So uh, so I, your birthday might be today, right? But I want to tell you that uh, that the square guy. Uh, I th think you're a great guy, and I want to wish you a happy birthday. A square guy does these streams, I was going to tell you here a moment ago. He uh, loves to build Legos. He, he, he builds things out of Legos, and he does these streams where he's putting together all the Lego kits and things like that. Really cool stuff. It's fascinating to watch, but he doesn't just sit there and build stuff. He's, he's right there with his tribe. He's there with the square gang. That's what he calls the tribe. Some people don't like to be called the tribe, okay? <laughs> they don't. But he's with, I don't even know if that's politically correct, but people will say that. You know, well, that's part of my tribe. Uh, but he has the Square Gang. I'm a member of the Square Gang. I'm a VIP member of the Square Gang. How about that? I, I should drink to that. But, uh, and, and I will at some point. I, I actually have. But that Square Guy, he puts on these great Lego videos and he he puts them together and he uh chats with everybody everybody has a great time it's a lot of fun you should check it out if you like legos uh he also does some uh gaming he uh does some uh games streams some games breath of the wild things like that i know he's occasionally he's done a couple of other games one of the other things that he does that's very uh and that, that i really enjoy watching are his baking videos he and darcy get together and they do these baking videos and they love to bake pies, among other things. They like to bake pies. Now, they did, because it's his birthday, it's his birthday month, uh, he and Darcy did a baking video yesterday where they were baking two pies, and they were baking a cherry and a blueberry pie. And I tell you, my mouth was watering the whole time I'm watching this thing. I'm And I was, yes, and I was drinking along, too. Yes, I was. But... My mouth was really watering. I, I even left at one point. Do you know that I left at one point for a few minutes, go downstairs and see what was in the fridge? You had me going there. And I really don't need to be going anywhere except to the gym. But you had me going there for a while. I was down there renting the refrigerator looking for something to eat. We didn't have any pie, unfortunately for me. But it got me going. It got me hungry. Anyway, the whole process was a lot of fun to watch. It, it was a lot of fun to watch. It, it was. But, uh, you know, interacting with everybody was a lot of fun. We had a little bit of, we had a bit of a, bro, a birthday celebration going there, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, we sure did. And uh, everybody got involved. It was a great time. Great time was had by all. But the pies looked great. They looked fabulous when they were done. I only wish that I could have had a piece because they looked great. Now, uh, my wife, Chi... She prepares her blueberries. She makes like a a, a, a blueberry uh, topping that that she that she puts that we put it on the crepes. She makes homemade crepes, by the way. She she has a blueberry topping and a strawberry. She does a strawberry one too that she puts on the crepes and on pancakes and waffles and things like that. And it is great. Sometimes I'll take you know she makes plenty of it, so she put it in the fridge and it'll keep for a little while. But I'll get it out and you know my son and I will 
you know, put it on like jam on toast and things like that is awesome. Really, really good. Uh, and I love blueberries anyway. I love blueberries and I love cherries. Now, it was a cherry pie that you made, right? It was a cherry. Did I start a strawberry? I mean, okay, it was cherry and blueberries. So they had made a cherry pie and a blueberry pie, and I love cherry pies also. Anyway, so uh, the square guy, your birthday is tomorrow. I guess pretty much almost today, right? If it's today there already. We're not going through that again, are we? Anyway, here's to that square guy, my good friend. Happy, happy birthday. And may you have many, 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 many more. And you know what? I'm going to toast you again just because I can. That square guy, happy, happy birthday. And you know what we're going to do? A little surprise there. Darcy with you? Let's toast Darcy. Here's to Darcy. Darcy Stardust. Happy, uh, happy Saturday. Sunday. <laughs> happy weekend. Here's to you, Darcy. All right. Let's see what's going on here. Um, yes, Tom Antio says, ooh, cherry pie, underrated in my opinion. Yes, yes. That's true. It is underrated. Uh, cherry pie is underrated. Um, let's see what else we got here going in the stream. I think everybody's having a back and forth conversation, right? It's very good. My brother, my uh, square guy says it's very good. My brother got it to drink with me. Oh, the IPA, the IPA. And square guy says we're all ready. It's today. Okay, so it is today for you. Tomorrow for me, and about. Uh, actually, in about 12 minutes, it'll be today, or tomorrow, tomorrow in 12 minutes. <laughs> I'm confusing myself now. But uh, the score guy says it's today. Okay, so it, so it is today, your birthday. Well, happy birthday. And um, let's see, what else? What, what did I miss here? I've been missing a lot of stuff here. Yes, the score guy it says 20th of June, today here. Okay. Okay. Um, and the CM Sanders says Legos are made up of squares. And yes, they are. Uh, the score guy says, can't believe it had been six months since I last did your favorite kind of stream. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while since you've done a baking stream, but uh, I'm glad you guys did. Well, you, you made up for it by baking two pies in this stream. It was We had double the fun. Double the fun. The score guy says, uh, we certainly had a celebration. Thank you. I'm very happy with how they turned out. They looked really good. And, uh, yeah, we made one cherry and one blueberry, yeah. Um, and he says, thank you, Rick. The family really enjoyed all of that. And Darcy says, thank you. That's very sweet. Cherry pie is the best pie. Of course, I'm a Twin Peaks fan. That's true. Cherry pie was uh, was uh, kind of a... It, 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 the thing is about cherry pie and Twin Peaks, for those of you who don't remember the old show uh, Twin Peaks, really odd show, right? Kind of fun to watch, but kind of odd, and, and it just the way it ended was a little bit. I think some a lot of fans were upset that it ended the way it did because it really didn't <laughs> didn't really end. I was kind of <laughs> in my opinion, <laughs> but uh, the cherry pie that was uh, th that was uh, that was a thing going on in Twin Peaks, kind of like in the same almost in the same way. Well, not exactly the same way, but kind of in the same vein that pineapples. Uh, had a thing going on in uh, in Psych, in the TV show Psych. Has everybody seen the TV show Psych with uh, uh, Sean and Gus, uh, that whole bit? And uh, uh, it was a great show, a great, great show, Psych. And they've been doing movies. I think they've got six movies planned. They've already done like two or three, I think. Or they got a third one coming out. Uh, but uh, Psych, a classic TV show, and... Uh, on Psych, it was pineapples. They always had a pineapple, you know, hidden somewhere, showcased somewhere. It became a meme, you know, it became a thing, the pineapple. Um, that square guy says, very odd. You should re-watch it, then watch The Return. It's incredible. Oh, you know what? I forgot about that. I forgot about The Return. The Twin Peaks. Yeah, I did. And uh, Roy Turp says, hi, Rick, and hi right back at you, Roy Turp. And uh, it's great to see you here. It says, do I have to uh, wish that square guy happy birthday again? Well, I, why not? Why not? He's right here, and and we're right here, and I got the wine right here. Happy birthday to that square guy again. Uh, CM Cinder says, Psych is so good and a really funny show. 
That's it is it is. <laughs> and the square guy says, "Ha ha, Roy Turp, you'd better." I think he wants Roy Turp. I think he wants one more one more toast. <laughs> and Roy Turp has done that. <laughs> he uh, said, "Happy birthday, dude." So. Um, Anyway, I've got the fireworks still going back here, so I think that's got it for the for the, the birthdays for now, right? Okay, oh, let me retire the fireworks for just a, a little for a little while. Now back to the wine for just a moment. We are drinking. This is a Montresor Rostigo Rosa. It's a Veneto. This is a 2019, and uh, so far I'm really liking it. I'm really enjoying this wine. Not too. It's it's 12 and a half percent alcohol, I believe. Uh, that's yeah. That's what it is. 12.5 percent ABV. And it's so far, it's actually a pretty decent wine. I like it. It's not overbearing. It's a very, very nice, very smooth wine. I like it a lot. Um, so we're going to try the Casella di Poggio uh, dessert wine here in just a little bit, just as a bonus. But let's go back to, um, to the show here for just a minute. I've got something else I want to show you. Okay, uh, National Days. Let's do that really quick. Let's, go, let's get to the National Days real quick all right uh where was it okay national days we can all toast the national days i hope you have enough beer that square guy we're gonna do some toasting okay so june 19th which is uh which is today for about six minutes <laughs> six more minutes it's national free bsd day and if you don't know what free bsd is uh, we don't have enough time for me to explain all that uh, national garfield the cat day who doesn't like garfield the cat not my favorite, but yeah, it's okay. I have a friend of mine who loves Gar, who who always loved Garfield. That was his favorite comic strip, and that's some funny ones. National Garfield the Cat Day. My thing, my favorite was uh, it was always the Far Side with Gary Larson because it was just so weird and off the wall, kind of like me. Anyway, National Garfield the Cat Day. To, uh, today was also I should let you know today is also Juneteenth. Juneteenth, and for those of you living outside the U.S., I, I don't really expect you to get the grasp the significance of this. But on a serious note, Juneteenth is a very important day. This is the day that marks the the end of slavery in the United States. The it marks the end of the official end of slavery in the U.S. Uh, and June, uh, Juneteenth, they actually made it an official official national holiday this year, but it's been. It's been an, a it's been a, a day, you know, that that people have celebrated for many, 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 many years. But they, I think that uh, uh, they that they just made it into a, a federal holiday. So now uh, this is Juneteenth, and I will drink to that because I tell you what, slavery is a horrible thing. I I I, I don't understand it. I really don't understand the concept. How and and, and the thing is, slavery is not new. You know, when people these days in our day and age think of slavery, we automatically think of um, the oppression of blacks, black slavery. But the thing is that slavery has been with us for almost since the beginning of, of, of man itself, himself. It's throughout man's history, there have been slaves. I mean, you know, of course, there have been the, the uh, Israelite slaves, and in Egypt, and there have been uh, other slaves. There have been slaves from other countries. That there have there has been slavery of every, every, um, uh, every uh, pretty much race and in, in, in creed uh, at one point or another at some time in man's history. Uh, the 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 fact that one man has enslaved and. Uh, you know, owned another person and, and, and that sort of thing. It's, it's, it's a horrible thing. And it's something that I personally detest because I, I just can't imagine that one person could, could own another person. It, it just, it, it just, I don't get, I really don't get that at all, that concept. And it's, because each one of us, each one of us is a, a human being, an individual, a soul. You know, a, a, we're we're all individual people, and I think everybody has the right to live and to live free. That's that's just a that's just a human right. It doesn't matter 
what you know and this is not a uh, I'm not getting political here this is not a political show and I don't do religion uh, on the show but I'm just talking about from a human rights perspective just general human rights everyone has the right to their own life right to to have their own life and to, and to live their own life right I you'd think so um, so for that reason I totally endorse and I totally toast Juneteenth because uh, I think if we could end it and abolish any kind of a slavery, any kind of slavery from here on forward through humanity's future, I think is a good thing. So here's to Juneteenth. I'll drink to that. To Juneteenth. Let's see. Um, today for another minute, couple of minutes is National Watch Day. National, I don't know if they're talking about watches or wa or watches. I don't know. It's National Watch Day, Jan June 19th. All right, June 20th. June 20th. Yeah, uh, uh, Roy Terp says Juneteenth, America's true Independence Day. I, I think that's true. I, I think that's true. Juneteenth is, is America's true Independence Day in, in many ways. I mean, America got their independence from England because we were subject of England. So in a way, that's, that was kind of a form of slavery, right? Yeah, and 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 here we are. You know, Juneteenth comes along, and we and we get we we do away with slavery of of others, where where um, some people have have enslaved others in this country and in other countries. Um, it's and it still goes on today. Slavery that goes on today. There is. Uh, that, that's just a lot of the stuff that goes on today in various parts of the world. And uh, personally, I think it should all be abolished. Nobody should own anybody else. That's just, it's, it's wrong on so many levels. Anyway, um, June 20th, which is coming up, uh, it's just about June 20th now, National Koi Aman Day. It's American Eagle Day, American Eagles. International Nystagmus Day. I, I, I have no idea what that is, to be honest. Uh, National Hike with a Geek Day. I've done that, and I am a geek. I have hiked with a geek. <laughs> Hike with a Geek Day. National Vill Vanilla Milkshake Day. Who doesn't like a good vanilla milkshake? Except people who don't like vanilla milkshakes. National Ice Cream Soda Day. I'll drink to that. I like a good ice cream soda. Mm. Cherry soda with, with, uh, with vanilla ice cream in it. Mm-hmm. Um, well, okay, it's Turkey Lover's Day. Third Sunday in June is Turkey Lover's Day. It's also Anne and Samantha Day, summer and winter solstice. It's uh, the, the summer solstice is what uh, this is here. Uh, yeah, that's right, June 20th, summer sol uh, solstice. Um, National Seashell Day. First day of summer is National Seashell Day. So it's also... Summer begins, the first day of summer, the longest day of the year. That's what makes it the summer solstice, the longest day. The winter solstice is the shortest day of the year. The summer solstice is the longest day of the year. Summer begins, and you know what? It says 12 midnight here, 12 a.m., so I guess it's officially summer. Here's the summer, and I just hope my A.C. holds out through the summer. <laughs> Here's the summer. Knock on wood. There. Here's the summer. May it be a good one for everyone because we need a good summer this year. We need we haven't had a good we didn't have a good summer last year. We need one this year. Oh oh oh! I almost forgot, didn't I? Yes, I almost forgot. Roy Turp, thank you for reminding me. It is on my list, but I was going to save it for last, and it is last now. Last but not least, today is now officially Father's Day. June 20th is Father's Day, third Sunday in June. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers everywhere. And look, if you're a father or soon to be a father or want to be a father, there is no greater gift, in my opinion, than the gift of life and the gift of life of your own offspring. And you know what? Just because you're not a father per se, if you're sort of a, a surrogate father to someone else, because there are a lot of people who don't have their fathers and don't have them anymore, who've lost their fathers by, you know, in, in one way or another. But if you're a stepfather or a grandfather or 
uh, you know, someone who is who who performs the duties of a father, and uh, you know, because really a father is, yep, there there's the flesh and blood father. I I am a proud father of two wonderful kids. Two, they're not kids anymore; they're grown up now. Uh, two wonderful young adults. It's it's great to be a dad. It really is great to be a dad. Yeah, it comes with its it comes with its its. Uh, Ups and downs. It's it's um, you know trials and tribulations. It's good times, it's bad times, all that stuff. It it does. It's all part of life. It's all part of life. But I tell you what, I wouldn't trade it. I wouldn't trade being a dad for anything. It's just uh, just an awesome thing being a dad. And I tell you, you know, I don't think pe- some people would appreciate. And I, I've said this before. I I was present at the. Uh, live birthing of both of my kids, both of my children. And I will tell you, it is an, a very, very emotional and a very awe-inspiring experience. It's a very humbling, a very humbling experience. Because all of a sudden, you're placed with the responsibility of another human life. And it's just, it's, it's, it's overwhelmingly humbling. It, it is. But it's also at the same time, it's just it's just awesome. It's just an awesome thing. And I want to say to all fathers everywhere, be good to your kids. Um, teach them well. Raise them well. Because you know what? The mother is the nurturer. The mother is the... And the kids need both parents, by the way. The mother is the nurturer. But the dad is really kind of the teacher. When it comes to the, the father, kids look up to their fathers. They They look to their fathers for a lot of their guidance through life. And if a father can be there to, to provide that, that guidance to them, then the kids have a leg up on, on, on whatever they come across in this world, and, and especially in this world today. Uh, look at all of the homes that do not have their fathers. The, a lot of the uh, fatherless homes in uh, the, the, the state of families today around the world. And it's not just in America. It's a, it, it happens all around the world. But um, those homes that do not have their fathers, they struggle. You know, the, the, the kids struggle. They really struggle in those homes. So I firmly believe that fathers and mothers are both have their, uh, their place, you know, in the family unit. And, and I think that's what builds a strong family. And, and I... Uh, for fathers, if you have the opportunity to be a father, be a good one, and uh, and I salute you to fathers everywhere. Happy Father's Day! And I'll drink to you again because well, I'm a dad, and because I can. Here's to Father's Day. I am in no way diminishing mothers. Okay. No way, and I'm telling you something, mothers are crucial to a family. So are fathers. Equally crucial to 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 having a good good family structure, you know? And I'm a big big believer in that, because I'm a dad. And uh <laughs> that's uh yeah. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> Try not to get too deep in all that. All right, and I'm not tuning my own horn, by the way, because I could. I have learned more. I tell you what, I have learned more from my wife, and from my own children, than I have probably ever taught my kids. <laughs> I can tell you that. Uh, I make mistakes. You know, dads do. We're human. But um, let me tell you, I wouldn't trade it. I wouldn't trade it for anything. Uh, let me catch up on the track here for just a minute. And, uh, uh, oh, Breadlight uh, Bex uh, is in the chat. It's great to see you, Breadlight Bex. Good to see you here. I'm glad you're here. He says, we need a, uh, we need a hot summer. Yeah, uh, the, the world needs it. Okay. <laughs> uh, Rye Bread Art says, it was 110 yesterday. Feels like summer has already begun in California. Yeah, they're having some record, uh, they're having some record fires there, right? If you can beat the record fires from last year, it seems like every year they have record fires. But if... Uh, Seems like every year, it's a record for for fires uh, over last year, which is not not good at all for for California. Um, CM Center says Happy Father's Day, Dad. Well, thank you, thank you. Happy Father's Day, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, Tom Antio uh, says, Oh yeah, you're a father. Happy Father's Day. Oh yeah, I forgot. 
forgot, did you? A square guy says, happy Father's Day, Rick. Well, thank you. Thank you, a square guy. I appreciate that. Uh, Roy uh, Terp has this in parentheses. As an aside, I'm pretty sure they made uh, Queen Amon an old episode of GBBO. And Seema Cinder says, Tommy, did you just forget that your our dad is a dad? <laughs> uh, maybe I shouldn't read some of these. <laughs> Uh, the square guy says, CM Cinder, streamer buddy first, dad second, apparently. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. <laughs> this really, and Roy Turp says, this, it, it really is Square's after party, after party. Yes, it is. It's his after party, after party. And join the party because, uh, because, uh, yeah, it's, it, it's, uh, it's Square's birthday. Yeah, it's all day. It's his birthday. So uh, then what did I miss? I catch up here on the chat. Um, okay, uh, uh, Square Guy says, unfortunately, I have to run pie time. I might try to pop in back in later. Well, I hope you pop in here sooner than later because we're about to show a film here in just a couple minutes or a few minutes. I'm about to do the setup for it right now, as a matter of fact. About to show a film I made back in, in the 1980s. And... Uh, <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, and uh, let me check the chats here in on Facebook. Okay, she says, Happy Father's Day, Rick. You are one of the best. Well, thank you. That's really sweet. I really appreciate it. I do. Honestly, I do. Okay, well, enough about me. Enough about Father's Day. Let's get to this. I, I want to show you this film, uh, but I have to set it up for you. And this goes back to uh, where we were toasting my good friend Will Campbell. Okay, so... Um, it's going to take a minute or two to set this up because if you want, if I just show you this film, it's not going to make any sense whatsoever. It's not going to make any sense. So there is a little bit of a setup here. So bear with me for just a moment. Okay. Well, in, um, in, as many of you know, uh, I was a, f a filmmaker, uh, in a past life and, you know, like low budget films and, and, and things like that. And, um, I joined a club in Orlando called the Cinematography Club of Orlando. Hey, great name from a club, you know? It's in Orlando. It's a cinematography club. Cinematography Club of Orlando, yeah! Uh, okay, so I joined this club along with my buddies from high school, Jim and Pete and Eric, who I mentioned before, and who some of the films I've shown that featured them uh, in times past. And I'll be showing some more of those again later on in, in the coming uh, couple of months, hopefully. But um, when we joined this club, we, we met a lot, of, a lot of interesting, a lot of really nice and interesting people that were fellow filmmakers and uh, amateur filmmakers, that sort of thing, people doing it for fun. And uh, one of these gentlemen, his name was Will Campbell. Will, I think at the time we met him, he was in, like in his 40s, and uh, he had a band. He had a, a country band on the side that he performed and he did pretty well with. And uh, he did a lot of things. He was in a lot of things. But uh, one of the things he was uh, into was uh, making some, some films. And he had a lot of great equipment, film equipment that he acquired over the years. Anyway, he was president of the club for a couple of years. And uh, I think he was on the board for, for many years. I was, as a matter of fact, for seven years, I was the newsletter editor of the, the film club. So we made some films, you know, everybody kind of made some films, did some of their own projects. Well, the film club, one of the things that we did on a fairly regular basis in the film club was that we'd hold these little contests, little contests. And, and the, the thing about the contest was kind of to keep honing our filmmaking skills. We would have uh, one reelers. We'd do these contests where they had to be one reelers and you would have, sometimes they would give you a certain topic uh, or a certain uh, theme or subject to, to make a film about. And sometimes they were just kind of, you know, whatever you want to do. And they would hold these contests and everybody would, would spend a few weeks making their one little one reeler films. And then at the, uh, the end of that period, we'd have the contest night and we'd have the projector out and everybody would show off their films and there'd be a winner and they would get, they would get an award. Cool stuff. Well, Will, we always kind of a bombastic guy. He was, and I don't mean that in a bad way. He was just very, he, he was larger than life. Will was just a larger than life kind of guy. And uh, he, uh, he'd have a tendency to, to uh, make his films. And even the, 
kind of the silliest films he made, he'd rack up the awards. He'd have a tendency to win the award. Now, I don't know if it was just because he was larger than life Will Campbell or just because everybody sort of favored Will or, or they, were, they were trying to suck up to him for one reason or another because he was he did hold positions in the film club. <laughs> and I'm not accusing anybody of that by any means, okay? Uh, I'm, just, I'm just throwing that out there. So... <laughs> But for one reason or another, it seemed like he was always winning the award, or every so often. Well, one time he made a film uh, that where he was kind of poking a little bit of fun, and it, it was all in good. It was all in good fun, so I didn't take it. I, I I wasn't really offended by it or anything, but he was kind of poking fun at me because when I was younger, and even now, if you watch the show now. Uh, I could be prone to, I just did it as a matter of fact, I could be prone to saying the word, uh, 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 uh. But when I was a lot younger, I, it, it was a tick. It was like, uh, 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 uh. Okay, so he made a film one time where he, that's what he did. It was a film about uh. And he was basically poking fun at me and my mannerism of just saying uh between every few words. Uh, it was fun. We, we took it uh, in, in, in stride. Well, and then he would come up with these other films, kind of silly, in my opinion, were kind of silly films, where he would put the least amount of work into making this film to see if he could win the award. And more often than not, he would win the award by putting the least amount of work possible into it. So he would set up his film camera as a sound, Super 8 sound film camera, and sometimes he did it on video. Sometimes he just put out a video camera and did it. He would get behind the couch with sock puppets and do these little sock puppet videos for, for like two minutes or whatever it was, and, and with really goofy dad jokes and things like that, and, uh, and kind of pointless stuff, that, as I recall. And he'd win the award. And Jim, my friend Jim and I, Jim Chamberlain, it, it would kind of blow us away a little bit. It's like, oh, man, how can everybody put all this work in this film, and then he'd make this little thing where he's doing sock puppets, and it's like, and he wins the award. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, so we had a, another contest come up. We had another film contest come up, and this is where this film comes in. We had a contest come up to do a short uh, film, a one-reeler, and uh, it could be anything we wanted it to be, whatever we wanted it to be. So Jim and I got together, and we decided to do a short animated film, and because the last film contest, Will had really gone to town with the uh film about me, we thought we'd poke a little fun at Will. And then once again, this is all good-natured fun. But So this film is chock full. Of, and then the reason I'm setting all this up before I show this film, because if I just showed this to you, it would make absolutely no sense whatsoever. After you see this film, it will make no sense whatsoever. So feel free to ask me questions about any of it. But all of the visuals in this film, all of the soundtrack, everything that's said and, and sung and whatever in the film has to do with willisms and um this that's that's the film so i'm doing this in honor of my good friend will campbell because will is no longer with us now he passed away as i, I toasted him earlier he passed away in 2018 his birthday was uh friday which would have been his birthday he would have been 90 years old and uh we missed we miss will terribly because uh he was he was just a fun guy he really was. And he had his things. He had his mannerisms, which you'll see in the film in a moment, if you can recognize him. And actually, watch the film and see if you can point out what we're pointing out as some of his, uh, what we call the willisms. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go, go ahead and show it to you now. Hopefully, it'll play. This is the damn film. Hell, it looks like it's a damn film. Off it is little Sulu. On for dinner. Hell, I can get that for $4.95 on my senior citizen card at the Village Idiot Restaurant. Uh, uh, uh. 
Hell, looks like that damn damn damn. Hey, looks like they sent this damn film to champagne. Oh, the new damn members. Oh, they can't vote yet. Let me tell you all a story about it. The ACBA, a poor film club, had a contest one day. All the members with the entries had movie making skills, but they all lost to a man named Will. Who has an entry? We do. We do. Who's going to beat us? Somebody, Somebody will. will. Will, will, win or will we? 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 So the sheriff's out back. So the sheriff's out back. It looks like the end, Jim. All right, and that was the damn film. Uh, I'm sure if anybody's left after this, you probably have some questions. And they're like, what the heck was that? Okay. Um, see if you can pick out any of the willisms in this. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, I just said, uh, didn't I? Picking out my Rickisms now. So, Will, one of the things that he did... He, he served in the armed forces uh, when he was younger. One of the things that uh, he used to do, a willism, was he used to use those two words a, a, a lot. He used to use uh, damn a lot and, and used to use... Uh, his, his thing was to, to use it just about in every sentence, a couple of times in every sentence. And, and it would be one of those things where... Well, I would have shot this damn film on video, but the damn video camera wasn't working, so I'd go to the, uh, so I had to go to the Super 8 camera. The Super 8 camera, that I was out of damn film. I was out of the damn film, the Super 8 camera, so I'd have to go back and borrow somebody else's video camera so I could do this damn video. <laughs> and that was, that was, that was a willism. But he had, a, but it was it was fun. We we poked some some fun at that. But we had a lot of uh, other things in there. There are a lot of little things in there that people probably wouldn't get. But the the deal with the champagne bottle. What was the deal with the champagne bottle? Well, we had a. I'm going to tell this story because this is kind of interesting. Maybe unless you're not interested, then it's not interesting at all. <laughs> uh, with a champagne bottle. The guy catching the champagne bottle in one clip. Uh, we had a local in Orlando. We had a local uh, film processing plant. And it processed the film for, for a lot of areas, not just in Orlando, but throughout Florida and Georgia and, and part of the East Coast. So everybody would send, like, I don't know if you're, you're old enough to remember this, but back in the day before all the digital cameras were out and we shot everything on 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 film, like still film and 35 millimeter still pictures and, and the old still cameras with the, where you actually had stuff printed on paper. And you'd, you'd take your photos, you want to get your photos processed, you take your film uh, to, say, the local drugstore or the local supermarket, and they put it in a little envelope and they'd send it off to, to have it processed. And a few days later, a week or so later, it'd come back, depending on how far away the way the processing center was. Well, Champagne Color company was a, a big processing center in Orlando. Now one of the cool things about living in Orlando at the time and being a, a, a filmmaker, an amateur filmmaker, making Super 8 films, that we could take our films, instead of having to take it down to the local Eckers or whatever to get processed, we could take it directly to the Champagne Color because they were right there in town. So we could take it to Champagne and drop it off and then sometimes a day or two later we'd get it back which was pretty cool. The bad thing about Champagne Color is they had, they had a tendency to really, the chemicals that they used to process other films with, uh, they had a, tend to, a tendency to overuse them and to the point where they wouldn't change them out very often sometimes. And they wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't keep things clean in there as, as, they, as they should, in my opinion. So sometimes you would get your photos back or your negatives back with uh, artifacts in them. You know, little 
you know, they tell you to not handle the, the, the film, you know, the negatives with your hands and get them scratched up and stuff. Well, the, that's because the processing plant would do it for you. You know, they'd get them back and they'd find scratches and stuff. For our films, for our Super 8 films, oftentimes, not all the time, but oftentimes, we would get our films back with a little blue line down the middle of them. It was showing that they, they, they weren't really taking much care in the processing uh, process of processing the film. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, yeah, see what, see what I did with there. Um, so, we get that back, and that was one of our, our things against Champagne Color. We, some of us started sending our film out to some other places because Champagne was, would, would just treat our film so terrible. And uh, that was one of the things at one time, I think Will made a film and they had a blue line show up in his film or something and he, he got all upset about that. I, I think that was his. Um, and and we, we'd get him back and, and we'd get upset about it. So that was that one line about the looks like it went to a damn champagne. That, that champagne bottle was a, was a metaphor for a champagne color film company. So, which they're no longer in business, as far as I know. They they went out of business uh, a long time ago, years ago. But that was that little joke. So, so this whole film is just full of little, not just willisms, but little inside uh, or in, inside jokes and inside gags for the for the film club in general. So I don't expect anybody to get them. But if you watch this film after a few beers, after a few IPAs, I uh, would say for the square guy. Um, if you uh, watch this film after a few glasses of wine, or maybe a bottle of it, or a tequila, or whatever your favorite beverage is, um, it, it starts looking better, <laughs> and it starts making it starts to make sense. <laughs> yeah, at least for a little while, <laughs> until all the alcohol wears off. So anyway, th that's uh, that was the damn film. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. So, uh, Square Guy had to go eat some pie, so if he missed it, he'll catch it in the VOD for sure. Well, I hope you do. I hope you do. Anyway, what would you all think of it? Uh, I've got some more coming up. We, we did, I did get some more film back from Restoration. By the way, that was restored by Nicholas Coyle, nicholascoyle.com. If you have some films and, and, and things like that, negatives, videos, things like that, that are old, that need to be restored, he's the go-to guy, Nicholas Coyle. Uh, he does a fantastic job on doing film restorations. Does does a great job on all of that. So uh, I, I highly recommend Nicholas Coyle. Highly recommend him. He's the guy I've been using exclusively. So uh, anyway, I think uh, we can go ahead and wrap this up pretty pretty soon, right? I, I, it's kind of quiet in the chat. I think we've uh, we can kind of wrap this up. There are a couple of things I want to tell you. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. I almost forgot. Yes. Uh, I'm checking all the chats again here. It's very, very quiet tonight. Very quiet. As late as it is, too. I kind of figured that on the, the since we were starting later tonight on the West Coast, we'd get folks on the West Coast in here. I think we do have a couple. I don't know. They're hiding. They're hiding out. Anyway, so I want to tell you how to win a free bottle of wine. If you've heard this before, this is a reminder, so you can uh, try it again. But this is... Uh, this is how to win a free bottle of wine in June 2021. Uh, Frank Romian of HowToPickAWine.com is giving away a bottle of wine. This is how to do it. There are four ways that you can get an entry to win a free bottle of wine. The first way, I'm going to tell you, that you try all four ways, you get four entries. So the first way to win a free bottle of wine, the June 2021 giveaway, is to join his Facebook groups, How to Pick a Wine and Italian Wines, Food, Travel, and Culture, the two different groups. How to Pick a Wine and Italian Wines, Food, Travel, and Culture. Join those groups, you get an entry. Second way, second entry, follow him on Instagram at How to Pick a Wine. This will be Frank Romian. Follow him on Instagram at How to Pick a Wine. That's another entry. You get another entry just for that. Third way, third entry. Scroll down on his website, howtopickawine.com. Scroll down to subscribe to my blog via email. Subscribe to his blog. That gets you a third entry. Or, or if you're only doing that one, that gives you one entry. Each one gives you an entry. Fourth way, 
Hit like on his post. Win a free bottle of wine June 2021 giveaway. Hit like and you'll get a, an entry. You do all four, you get four entries. Now, here's the thing. Well, you say, well, what if I've done this? You know, he gave away a bottle of wine in January, February, March, April, and May. He's given one away for June. But I, I did all of this for the previous ones. And I didn't win those previous times. Can I enter for this one? Absolutely, you can. The way you do it, that if you're already doing all those, if you've already done all of that for the previous contest, send him a private message and your name, and he will enter you in the contest. So you go to uh, uh, howtopickawine.com. Uh, message him on. You can message him on Facebook and, uh, and, and Instagram, but you can also send him a private message uh, via his blog at howtopickawine.com. Four entries. There are four chances to win, and you'll be competing with me because I think I'm going to enter as well. This happens at the end of June. At the end of June, he's going to to draw. Here are the the rules. I'm going to give, read the the rules. He says, I will run the contest. I'm reading this from their website at uh, howtopickawine.com. I will run the contest for the month and put everyone who participated into a randomizer to select the winners. The more people that enter, the more wine I give out. Woohoo! Okay. In addition, I want to thank all of you. No, the hoo-hoo was mine. I wasn't on the... In addition, I want to thank all of you for your support, and this is the best way I know how. Sorry, but you have to be living in the 48 states on the U.S. mainland to participate. Disclaimer, you are considered 21 or older if you enter. So if you enter, you're saying that you're 21 years or older. He can't discern that from just getting a, a name and an, and an entry. <clears throat> so he's assuming that you're 21 years older or older if you enter the contest. So that's how to win a free bottle of wine in June 2021. Howtopickawine.com. Please go do, join it. Enter it. You know, it's free, and you can't beat free, right? Right. Okay, uh, Roy Terp says, that was fun. I love the aesthetic. <laughs> Talking about the, the, the film? Thank you. It was shot on Super 8, frame by frame, the way we did it in the old days. Yes, the, 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 way, the way films were supposed to be made back then. <laughs> Now everything's digital. Now everything's uh, <clears throat> CG. Everything's uh, graph, uh, digital graphics, computer generated, uh, all that kind of stuff. Where's the fun in all of that? Well, there's fun in all that. There's, there's some fun in doing that. But, man, I tell you, there was some real art that, that went into making some of those films back in the day. Before you had computers to do a lot of that stuff for you, you had to figure it all out by yourself. And you had one shot at it. If you didn't, if things weren't perfect the first time, it, it just screwed it all up. So you had to do, you know, you had to you had to be very very careful about all that stuff, lighting and focusing and making sure your hands weren't getting in the way in between shots and things like that. You know, just uh, make sure the animation was smooth and knowing where and how to move stuff just right. It, 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 it was a lot to it. There, there really was. Anyway, so. Uh, I've got one more item, one more item here I want to tell you about, and this is about weather radios. You know it is hurricane season. Today is officially summer, and you know what that means. That means summer storms. That means hurricanes. We got word that we had a, uh, a tropical storm that just made landfall off the Gulf of Mexico, off the coast of, of, of the Gulf of Mexico yesterday. And people are still dealing with that. And I think it's been spawning some tornadoes and things down there in Alabama and, and, and whatnot. And, and serious stuff. Very serious stuff. They say it's going to be an above average year for hurricanes. You know, they're looking at, I mean, uh, there are earthquakes that happen everywhere. There are all kinds of things. Tsunamis, things like that. You just never know what's going to happen next. So... I urge everyone to go to ready.gov. That's the government website, U.S. government website, ready.gov. They have a checklist of things to get to put together an emergency weather kit. Now, one of the most important items to get, besides food and water, emergency food and water, uh, yeah, and a flashlight, uh, things like that, is a weather radio, an emergency weather radio. I have one right here. I keep it right next to, right on my desk here. Okay, this is an emergency weather radio. This is a Midland ER310, but they make others. 
A lot of companies make weather radios. This is cool because it has five power options. I can power it with a, uh, there's a lithium ion battery in here I can power it with. There, you can put uh, alkaline, alkaline batteries in there. You can, uh, you can power it with a hand crank too. Look at that. That's pretty cool. For emergency power, if, there's, if your batteries die out, there's no power to keep the lithium battery charged, you can hand crank it up. Works. It does work. This thing has an SOS light on it. it flashes. Uh, you know, turn it on. There you go. Uh, that's a steady one, a steady flashlight, and a bright one, and then there's an SOS light. See, that's pretty cool, huh? And uh, it tells the time. It has uh, built-in AM, FM radio. It has the weather alerts. It has the weather channels. All the NOAA weather channels, weather alerts on it. Solar. You can also solar power this thing. Solar powered, which is pretty cool. So uh, there's a little antenna here that could go up here, the, uh, the uh, telescopic antenna. So a really, really cool device. You can get, that's a great option for weather radio. Actually, this model also has a, I think this one, the ER310, has a dog whistle on it. And you say, Rick, why on earth would you need a dog whistle on a radio? Well, I'll tell you. Let's say you're, say, let's, let's say you're in a snowstorm, okay? Or let's say uh, there's an avalanche and you're buried in the snow and they can't find you. And they send the dogs out and they're looking for you. Uh, the, they're not going to be able to hear your cries for help, if you can cry for help. But if you press in the, the button here to start the, the ultrasonic signal, sound, the uh, sound, the dogs can hear that pitch. The dogs can hear that frequency and it will lead them to you. So that's what the dog whistle is for. Is if, if, if they can't find you, then maybe the dogs will, and it'll help guide the dogs to you so they can get to you in time. Yeah, not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. Anyway, so weather radios. This is special for you. If you go to buy2wayradios.com, that's buy2wayradios.com, Get a weather radio or any kind of radio. They have uh, ham radios, FRS, GMRS radios, marine, airband, business radios, MERS radios, all kinds of radios. Scanners, they have scanners there. Go to buy2wayradios.com, enter the promo code. Whoops, I forgot to put the promo code in here, didn't I? All right, let's get the promo code in here. All right, promo code. Is that, uh, here it is, promo code. All right, enter the promo code wine show at checkout. If you enter the promo code wine show at checkout, you can save 5% off your order. Okay? Enter the promo code wine show at checkout. You can save 5% off your order. Now, for full disclosure, I am the product manager for buy2wayradios.com, but I don't make a dime extra on this because um, this is not, they're not sponsoring my show. Okay? Uh, by two-way readers, uh, I just I work for the company, but uh, I'm just making my regular paycheck. But my boss said, "Here, give your viewers and listeners of Drink with Rick a promo code, and they can save five percent." I said, "Oh, that's really cool. That's really awesome." So that's what I'm doing here, to full disclosure. So anyway, that is what I have tonight. Get a weather radio. Now, please, just 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 be prepared and, and get that list. Go to ready.gov and get that list and have it ready. Have an emergency kit ready. You just never know when you're going to need it. So um, I guess it does it for the episode. Unless anybody else has anything. Uh, Roy Turp is, 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 is saying something here. He says, I just remembered that I did an animated film in, in elementary school, 1984-ish, with the help of our librarian, I wonder whatever happened to it. Well, Roy Turp, I tell you, I would kind of like to see it. That sounds like I, I enjoy those kind of films. Um, that that's kind of how I. That's what I did when when I was uh, uh, younger. I, I did a lot of uh, a lot of films. We're going to be showing some more, as a matter of fact, um, down the road here in the next uh, month or two. I might have one to show in the next couple of weeks. Um, it'd be it'd be funny. Uh, I think you'd enjoy it. But uh, an animated film, I'd like to, you know, if you could get a hold of it, you could find it, get a hold of uh, the librarian, see what happened. Maybe you could track it down and get it uh, transferred over. And, uh, uh, you know, I'd, I'd be very, very interested in, in seeing that film. I'm pretty sure you'd be interested in seeing it again, too. I know it's been so long. One of the cool things about, about uh, the, the films, getting the films restored and transferred, is that some of these films I have, I have about 100,000 feet of film that I've shot over the years and 
I think I've transferred about uh, 12, 1,500 feet of it so far. Maybe a little more, maybe 2,000 feet or so. And um, some of the stuff I haven't seen in 30, 40 years. And it, it's just a hoot. It's, a, it's just a hoot to get the films back after they've been restored and go back through them and, and, and watch them again. It's just, it's, it's very nostalgic, but it's also been a lot of fun. And uh, hopefully it's been a lot of fun for you guys because I want to show you some more of the, some, some of the stuff that I did that, that back in the day. I'm not going to show all 100,000 feet because some of it's not really not... A lot of it's outtakes and some of the stuff that's, you know, I don't know, it's going to be family films and all kinds of stuff. But, uh, in other nonsense, but the, 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 a lot of the films that we made back in the day when we were in the film club and after that, before that, when I was in high school, because we had a high school film club, some of the other things that my buddies and I did, I got a lot of that right here. And I want to get that transferred over so we can all enjoy them. Because I think, I think you'd, I think you'd uh, enjoy seeing them. So, uh, I think that's really all I got. Roy Turp says, I might try to contact the school to see if they have an archive. Well, they might. Now, um, you know, it's funny thing is, is that our school, I went to Lake Howell High School in, in, uh, in Florida. And uh, there's in Oviedo, Florida. Um, and I graduated in 1978. Ooh, Rick, that's, yeah, I, I, I'm an old guy. Okay. So, but um, when I went back a few years later to try to see if some of the other guys that made films there, they, they didn't keep any of that stuff in their archives. As a matter of fact, I kept a few of the films that we made in the film club there. I kept a few of them there. And it was lucky, it was just, well, lucky. It was very fortuitous, fortuitous, fortuitous that uh, I went back there when I did because I actually rescued the films because they'd been sitting there for a little while and people were getting ready to throw them out because they didn't know what they were. They were, too, you know, they, 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 kind of, they were from like a few years earlier and they didn't know what to do with them. I rescued them. I said, hey, can I have my films back? And they said, sure. These are your films? Good. Take them. <laughs> we were going to get rid of them anyway. And I'm like, okay, that's, uh, that's not good. <laughs> and I took my films back. And rescue your films if you can. I mean, that's your legacy, right? That's part of your legacy. Rescue your films if you can. I, I highly recommend. Right, I highly recommend that you go back and, and try to try to do that if you can. All right. So I guess that does it for the show this week. Um, I want to thank everybody for being here with me. Oh, I do have a summer. Oh, we almost forgot to open the other bottle of wine, didn't we? The Castella di Poggio. I've been talking to the wrong camera. From I'm talking over here, and I had the wrong camera up. Sorry about that, folks. All right, Castello del Poggio. This is a Moscato. This is a dessert wine. Now, this was the other wine that my friend Ian recommended. I have another. Let me get. Let me get it over here. I have another glass that I can use in the back. Yes, that's real. That's not. That's not a. Uh, this is not a green screen. Okay, there's a blue screen up there. We use that. You can see that. This is not a, a green screen. This is a real set, okay? I built it myself, all with real stuff. The real bottles of wine, all of which I have drunk, drank, drinked, and, and drank, drunk, drink, drank, drunk, what, on, in past episodes. And if you go back, you can watch me drink every one of them. But don't do that right now. <laughs> Okay, so I just opened up. This is a Castello del Poggio. I'm going to pour just a little bit of this. I'm not going to go run it through the... Let's try it. Oh, it's a little fizzy. He did say it was a little fizzy. And he did say this was kind of a dessert wine. I'm going to read the back of this for just a, a moment. Uh, what I can read. The Poggio winemaking team makes uh, takes great pride in crafting delightful wines of the highest quality. Please enjoy. Exceptionally lively and fresh, Castello di Poggio unlocks great times and memories. Perfectly ripe grapes highlight the bright fruit expression of this delightful Moscato, beloved for its notes of fresh orange blossom, note that, white peach, note that one, and honey, ooh, note that, that lead to a crisp, lingering finish. Enjoy chilled with spicy fare, sushi, cheeses, and fruit-forward desserts. Now, this says it is... Um, 7% alcohol by volume in the 750 milliliter bottle. Now, Ian did say, Ian did say at the very beginning of the show, as I read, 
that uh, it was low alcohol, 7% alcohol, but this is considered a dessert wine, and you should have it with desserts. Now, I looked this up. I did look it up. It's a 4.2 star rating on Vivino. The average price is $12.75. I believe my wife paid, uh, I think she said it was uh, $9.99 or $11.99, something along those lines, Nine, between 10 and 11 So that puts it right in the ballpark. And uh, we're going to try this out right now, and we're going to try it with some desserts because they do say try it with desserts. So that's what we're going to do. And, of course, the dessert that we have to try it with on Cam 3 is... Uh, are these we've got this this is the uh this is the gluten-free which i'm really butchering up right now and the uh gluten-free cupcake vanilla cupcake and then we have a shortbread there so let me try a taste of this wine first before i do that let's try just a little taste of this wine and uh yeah, it is a little fizzy you can see it i don't know if you can see it too well here but there's a little on the fizz. Yeah, there it is. See a little. See some bubbles. Then we'll move out of the way here. Uh, it's a little, little bit bubbly. Okay, let's uh, get a swirl. Get a whiff. Hmm. Does smell a lot like. Uh, does smell kind of peachy. And some pear. Okay, and a little. I want to say a hint of pineapple in there too. Let me taste. Okay, wow. Okay, I like this. And you know I'm not a white wine drinker, but this is actually quite good. This is definitely a dessert wine, but I think this is something that you can drink if you have get well, <laughs> uh, you can <laughs> take three. There's another clip for you guys on Twitch uh, to clip. <laughs> um no, seriously, this is uh, this is actually pretty good wine. I wasn't expecting. I, I didn't know what to expect in this wine. I wasn't expecting much, but this is it's it is semi sweet. It's a semi sweet wine, but it is rather tasty. I like this, and I am absolutely sure. I am absolutely sure that my wife Chi, that Sam Cinder, and that uh, that uh, my son Tommy Tommy Antio would really enjoy this wine. I think they would really like this wine. This is a very, very nice tasting wine. Let me give it another taste here. Mm. Now, I was getting a whiff of pineapple, but I'm not really tasting the pineapple now. What I am getting is a strong taste of honey. Yes, it does have a honey taste to it. I'm getting some peach, a hint of pear, but some apricot, some apricot in there. But it's uh, I am getting uh, quite a bit of honey in this wine, and the honey taste is rather, uh, I would say it's it's rather dominant in a way. Peach, pear, uh, pe peach, apricot, and honey, very nice combination. Wow. I think this is a dessert wine is on on its own. I don't think you need to drink it with dessert, but we're going to have it with a little bit of dessert. Ian, my friend, if you're watching now or later, um, I, that was a good call. I like this, I and mean, I'm not a white wine guy, but I, I like this wine. All right, let's go ahead and, and try it with the, you know, I think this would go good with a vanilla cupcake. I think it would. I think it would go good with just about any dessert, but let me go ahead and try it with the vanilla cupcake with the right hand. Hmm. Oh, yeah, this is a good cupcake, by the way. We're going to have some sugar rush tonight. Hmm. Let's see. Oh, whoa, whoa. Wow, that's rich. Oh. And have some more of that, but uh, that was good. <laughs> that was good, but uh, that's almost like eating cotton candy. That was almost like eating uh, like a big shot of, big mouthful of cotton candy in a way. I mean, it tastes exactly like cotton candy, but it was that sweet. Whoa, that was that was good though. It was very good. All right, let's try it. Let's try it with the shortbread cookie. This might be a little bit more suitable. I think what I had was I had the the icing in there mixed in with it. I think the icing is what really did it. Let's try it with a shortbread cookie. Mmm. Hey, this is a nice cookie too. Mmm. Kind of lemony. Kind of lemony. Mmm. Let's see.
Whoa, again. I got to quit drinking this. <coughs> it's good. Okay, let me put it this way. That is dessert. <laughs> All the way around, that is definitely dessert. Beats the heck out of this cheese I had earlier. Uh, and if you weren't around for that, uh, trust me, you don't, you don't want to see the rewind on that part. Okay, that was very, very good. I, I, I think, um, well, I need some water. I need, I need a little bit of water here to cover the palate. It's, uh, that was a lot of uh, sweet stuff. Okay, the wine itself is a little drier than I expected. I expected a sweeter wine than this. It's a semi-sweet wine, but it's just a, a little drier than I expected, which is fine with me. It's fine with me because I prefer dry wine. That was very, very good. I enjoyed them both. Ian, my friend, I think you made a good call on, on the wines. I enjoyed them both. Thank you for your recommendations. And anyone else who wants who has a wine they like that they want to recommend, let me know. Send an email to me. Uh, just just send me an email at uh, rick at savoymedia.com. That's rick at savoymedia.com and, uh, with your wine recommendation. And, and if I can afford it, please try to keep it uh, affordable. <laughs> If I can afford it and I'll get a bottle, I'll try it and I'll drink it with you, along with you. Oh, wow. Both of these were good wines. Um, the Montresor Rustigo wine, which is the main wine we were drinking tonight. The Veneto, this is 2019. This is a, a very good wine. I really enjoyed it. I have very nice wine, and I think it's a great pasta wine. This is a great pie, wine for pasta. I had it with the, the chicken sausage, which I... I, that was not a great pairing for me, but the uh, sausage, the beef summer sausage was good, and the cheeses, well, two of the three cheeses were good, the, the cheddar and the, um, the uh, what was that, the Toscano with Syrah cheese, those were both very good. This other cheese, I think, had mold on it, or it was it was not very fresh. It was uh, whoop, Clarina Gouda cheese. It was not, yeah, I didn't care for that too much. Where's my, the Trader Joe's Gouda? I missed the Trader Joe's Gouda. I bet it would go perfect with the Trader Joe's Gouda cheese. I, I, I'm sure it would. Anyways, <laughs> pretty sure it would. We haven't, we've never had a miss on the Trader Joe's cheese. Okay, so I think we got everything covered tonight, didn't we? Yes, I think we did. We got the free bottle of wine and uh, uh, the contest and everything like that covered. Last call, anybody in the chat who wants to uh, join in the chat? Roy Turp says, I'm off to bed. Have a good night. And you too. Uh, Roy Turp, thanks for being here. I really appreciate it. I want to thank everybody for joining me here tonight. I want to thank, let's try Twitch first. I want to try Rye Bread. I'm try. <laughs> okay, I've had too much. Okay, and the sweet, the sweet one's kitchen, kicking in. It, it is. So it's, it's time to close it up. All right, I want to thank Rye Bread Art for joining me in the chat tonight. Thank you for being here. I really, really appreciate it. CM Cinder also, Tom Antio, uh, New Baptism, uh, thank you for being here in the chat. Uh, thank you for, for joining me here tonight. And uh, the Square Guy, of course, one more happy birthday toast to that Square Guy. Happy birthday. Do you? I don't think I can drink any more wine tonight. Ooh. That, uh, that, that dessert wine kind of did me in. Also, uh, thank you for... Uh, who else did I miss? Tommy Antio, did I mention you? Yeah, thank you for being here in the chat tonight. And uh, let, let's see, Roy Turp, thank you for being here. I, it is much, much appreciated. Uh, Rye Bread Art, did I mention you already? I think I, I think I did, but if I didn't, thank you for, for so much for being here. And did I miss anybody else on Twitch? I hope not. I don't want to miss anybody. Anywhere. My lovely wife, Chi, thank you for being here in the chat with me tonight. I do appreciate it. And all those who are watching but didn't join in but were watching, thank you for being here. I do appreciate each and every one of you. You're all important to me. Thank you very, very much. Now, if you'd like to um, contribute to the show, if you'd like to help me uh, by keeping the lights going, you can always buy me coffee. I don't have a, a, an affiliate program going on on Twitch. Uh, I've mentioned why many times before. I'm not going to go into it now. But you can always buy me coffee. Go to drinkwithrick.com, and you can buy me coffee there. That would be much welcome, much appreciated. But there's no obligation to do any of that, okay? There's no obligation. I just want you to enjoy the show. Just show up and enjoy the show. That's, that's, that's what this is all about. Thank you, each and every one of you, for being here and... Uh, I do appreciate it. I really do. I do want to ask everyone, please 
do not drink and drive. Drink in the comfort of your home, your apartment, your hotel room, your dwelling, wherever you are. Call an Uber, call a Lyft, call a cab, call a friend. Just stay put. Just don't drink and drive. Think of others as well as yourself. You may think you're fine. I may think I'm fine. But, you know, after enough of these, it, 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 distorts, it distorts perception. It does. So please do not drink and drive. Do not text and drive. Even when you're sober, do not drink and drive. Please, that's very dangerous. Because I want all of you, you're all very important to me. I want all of you to have a great week, but most of all, I want you to have a safe week. So you can join me here again next week on the Saturday Night Wine Stream, and we can all get together and drink with Rick. Good night.